Africa, a continent that is prominent for its ecological diversity and cultural richness. Africa is the home to over 3,000 different tribes, each having contrasting social and beauty norms. From the vibrant cultures of the West to the majestic landscapes of East Africa, Africa's beauty traditions are as diverse as they are mesmerizing. And today, we will embark on this journey across the breathtaking continent of Africa, delving into the rich tapestry of beauty norms. So without further ado, let's dive into the beauty standards across the plains and fields of Africa. Africa is home to many different beauty standards. These trends vary from place to place and tribe to tribe. So, from the tradition of embellishing lips with huge plates to tying huge metal rings around your neck, we have some interesting beauty customs up our sleeve. First on the list, we have the Nigerian custom of Geely tying, a Nigerian custom of head wrapping which women primarily practice. It's a popular custom and beauty norm that has transcended borders and is seen being copied by people worldwide. From intricate pleats to bold colors, each Geely tells a story. Jili is a Yoruba word for a large head wrap or scarf worn by women as a fashion accessory in weddings, parties, festivals, and ceremonies. The process of tying one is intricate and requires skill and practice. I want one. Different styles of tying exist, ranging from simple to elaborate designs, which vary depending on the occasion, personal preference, and cultural background. Next, we have Ethiopian lip plates. The ones who are frequent watchers of National Geographic or any wilderness channel have probably seen this one. Ventures into the hills of Ethiopia have brought us one of the weirdest fashion symbols, the lip plates. Yes, it has something to do with the lips. This striking beauty norm is seen amongst the women of the Mercy and Surma tribes who adorn themselves with lip plates as a symbol of beauty and cultural identity. The women typically start wearing lip plates at a young age, and the size of the plate increases with their age. Yes, you might get to see plates the size of a frisbee. This ancient tradition, though visually arresting, is a testament to the diverse expressions of beauty found across this continent. Next, we have the Somali henna hair dyeing. Henna is a skin adornment that is used in various countries and traditions globally to draw various mesmerizing patterns on the skin. In Somalia, henna is used for dyeing the hair. The women apply it to their tresses, resulting in a rich red hue that symbolizes beauty, vitality, and cultural heritage. Applying henna to the hair also shows how to improve the quality and lifetime of the hair. Next, we have the Maasa beadwork adornments. The Maasai tribe inhabits the vast plains of East Africa, primarily Kenya and Tanzania. These people have a rich tradition of creating intricate beadwork used in various forms of personal adornment and ceremonial attire. Traditionally, Maasai beads were made from natural materials such as clay, seeds, shells, and even bones. But then later in the 19th century, glass beads became the primary material used in Maasai beadwork. These beads are used in various forms including necklaces, bracelets, earrings, anklets, and headdresses. They're probably the pioneers in jewelry and fashion styles. Next, we have the Sudanese scarification. Sudan is a country of many traditions and cultures, but what's notable is their ancient practice of scarification. It's kind of scary. So what is scarification? Well, as the name says, scarification is the practice in which intricate patterns are carved into the skin using sharp tools. These scars patterns have different designs that add to the beauty of the skin. For many Sudanese tribes, scarification is a rite of passage, symbolizing strength, beauty, and cultural belonging. Next, we have Moroccan henna art. While some tribes in the plains of Africa apply henna to their hair, the Moroccans take center stage. Moroccan women take pride in their henna art as they apply them to their skins, making intricate and mesmerizing artworks on their hands and feet. Whether it's weddings or festivals, their henna artistry takes center stage. Next, we have Nambian Himba hairstyles. The art of styling hair has transcended borders with every culture and nation showcasing its hairstyles. This art isn't just limited to just modern or fashion-savvy countries. Rather, it is found in the remote deserts of Nambia where the Himba women intricately weave their hair into elaborate designs. These hairstyles are often adorned with beads and oshra paste. These styles reflect their cultural heritage and beauty ideals. Next, we have the Nigerian indigo tattooing. 
Tattooing has been seen as a huge form of physical adornment in many major countries. Surprisingly, tattooing is also in huge practice in the Nigerian Omo Valley. Indigo tattooing is a sacred tradition passed down through generations of women. Using natural indigo dye, intricate patterns are meticulously tattooed onto the skin. These tattoos serve as a symbol of beauty, identity, and cultural heritage. Next, we have the Malian mud cloth body painting. While tattoos are a fashion symbol prevalent throughout the world, body paints are something unheard of. If one meets the Dogon people of Mali, they'll definitely be mesmerized by the intricate paints on their body. So, what really is this? Well, the Bogo Lanfini is a traditional textile art that might not be body painting, but has close association with body decoration and traditional rituals within Malian culture. This cloth is handwoven from locally grown cotton, which is then dyed with fermented mud, plastic-based dyes, and other organic substances. But before we continue, please do hit that subscribe button for more videos from Luxury Lores, the right place where we show you what the bling life really looks like. Now, coming back to the video. Next, we have Nigerian Irun Kiko hair threading. The Yoruba people of Nigeria have their own style of tying their hair. That's pretty dope. The Irun Kiku hair threading is a cherished beauty practice among the women there. Using colorful threads, the women intricately thread their hair into elaborate patterns that symbolize beauty, creativity, and cultural pride. This custom of hair threading has the women possess unparalleled beauty which mesmerizes all that gaze upon them. Next, we have Ghanaian waist beads. Beads are both treasured and revered in Ghanaian culture. From birth to death, they play a significant role in the rites and customs of its people that go beyond mere self-expression. Beads in Ghanaian culture have long been considered vessels of spiritual energy. Multiple strands of colored beads made from seeds or glass are worn around a woman's waist to draw attention to and enhance her femininity. Next, we have Kenyan Maasai Warrior Shaving. The Maasai warriors of Kenya possess a similar look with their shaved heads. The Maasai warriors shave their heads as a rite of passage into manhood. This tradition has been centuries long one in which with ceremonial precision, young warriors undergo this transformative ritual, symbolizing courage, strength, and readiness to protect their community. Next, we have the Amasunzu hairstyle in Rwanda. The Africans have a keen interest in their hairstyles and have been the pioneers in many various styles. This interest led the Rwandans to formulate an elaborate hairstyle, the Amasunzu. This hairstyle is worn by Rwandan men and unmarried women with their hair styled into a crest, frequently described as crescent shape. This style is more than a fashion statement, it is a symbolic representation of cultural pride, ethnic beauty, and rich heritage. Next, we have the Berber facial tattoos. The Berber people are indigenous to North Africa and have a rich cultural heritage. This heritage is also the home to distinctive traditions of body adornment, including their infamous facial tattoos. Berber facial tattoos hold a deep cultural and symbolic significance, which serve as markers of identity, status, and tribal affiliation. The designs and meaning of these tattoos change with the varying tribes found, but they mostly represent lineage, marital status, religious beliefs, or protective symbols. These tattoos are etched by professional tattoo artists within the community, which are mostly elder women who use the traditional techniques to hand poke the designs onto the skin. Next up, we have the Wadabe Jero Festival Makeup. The Wadabe people are a subgroup of the Fulani ethnic group in the Sahel region of West Africa. The Wadabe are a tribe with rich customs and traditions, and amongst these, the most notable is the Jerwal Festival. The Jerwal Festival is an annual gathering that takes place during the rainy season, typically in September, when the Wadabe nomads come together to celebrate their culture, showcase their beauty, and engage in courtship rituals. This festival is also where you'll see unique and elaborate makeup displays. Colorful! These intricate designs and patterns are drawn from natural materials sourced from the environment. It is a stunning display of artistry and cultural expression and is more than just aesthetic embellishments. They are symbols of cultural identity, pride, and beauty. Next up, we have the Surma and Mercy Tribal Body Painting. 
Indigenous ethnic groups, the Surma and Mercy, belong to the remote regions of Ethiopia and South Sudan, particularly in the Omo Valley. Among these tribes, body painting holds significant cultural and symbolic importance, serving as a form of self-expression, identity, and social cohesion. The body painting involves the use of natural materials sourced from the surrounding environment. The primary pigment used for body painting is derived from clay or soil, which is then mixed with water to create a paint-like substance. These intricate designs and motifs reaffirm the people's connection to their land, their ancestors, and each other. Next, we have the Zulu headdresses and accessories. The Zulu are a Bantu ethnic group indigenous to South Africa. The traditional attire of the Zulu consists of headdresses and accessories that aren't just decorative, but also carry deep cultural and symbolic significance. These headdresses are of different styles, but notable are the Isi Cholo, aka Zulu hat, Isi Kiza, aka Zulu headband, Isi Kolo, aka Zulu necklace, Inkisiyo, aka Zulu earrings, Imbadada, Zulu anklets, and the last but not the least, Easy Kwaza, aka Zulu waistbands. All these are adorned with beadwork, embroidery, or metal embellishments. These headdresses and accessories play a vital role in expressing cultural identity, tradition, and social status within the Zulu community and represent the wearer's social status, age, marital status, and ceremonial roles. Next, we have the Saharan blue robes of the Tuareg. The Tuareg are a nomadic Berber ethnic group inhabiting the Saharan regions of North and West Africa. The Tuareg are also known as the blue people due to the indigo dye they use in their Saharan blue robes. These blue robes are iconic symbols of their cultural identity and heritage. The distinct blue color of the Tuareg robes is achieved through the use of natural indigo dye. Yeah, so shiny and blue! Derived from the leaves of the indigo plant, and it is a process of intensive labor which requires skills and expertise to achieve the desired depth of color. According to the Tuareg, the blue color is associated with the vastness of the desert sky and is believed to offer protections against the harsh desert sun and evil spirits. Moreover, they also provide protection and comfort in the harsh desert environment. Overall, the Saharan blue robes of the Tuareg are more than just clothing. They're timeless symbols of cultural heritage, resilience, and identity. And lastly, we have the Ndeble neck rings. The Ndeble people are an ethnic group native to Southern Africa, primarily inhabiting South Africa and Zimbabwe, who are known for their vibrant cultural traditions and artistic expression. This ethnic group is known for its colorful attire and iconic neck rings. These neck rings are often made of copper and brass, which adorn the necks of the Ndeble women. The neck rings, also known as Idzila, are worn as a symbol of beauty, cultural identity, and social status within the community. They're also seen as symbols of beauty, femininity, and marital eligibility, with married women typically wearing larger and more elaborate sets of neck rings than unmarried women. This Ndebele artistry has gained recognition on the global stage, with Ndebele artisans celebrated for their talent, creativity, and contribution to the cultural heritage of Southern Africa. And that's all that we have for you today. If you don't want to miss more fancy videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell icon. But before you go, please comment down below and let us know which beauty style was the most shocking to you and which beauty style was the most mesmerizing and beautiful.